Okay, uh, put that picture up for me real quick while I talk about it just for a second. Because today we're going to talk about the demonic. No, it's not the little boy. Uh, somewhere in that picture, there's another face. There's some set of eyes in there that is not supposed to be in there. I don't know if you can make it out. Where's my youth pastor, Michael, at? Uh, Is that the one that's going sideways? Okay, yeah. Okay, well, you're going to see a couple of more in a video that's going to be a lot clearer than that. Uh, and today we want to talk about the demonic. So if you put my slide up real quick, please, I'd appreciate it. We want to talk about the demonic. There is a world of the spirit. Uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, well, hopefully all of you know that, that uh, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in the book of Kings, there was a prophet named Elisha. He had a servant that, that waited on him. And the Syrian king was after Elisha. And so Elisha and his, ser and his servant were, were on a mountain. And that's where they, they had spent the night. And in the morning when they got up, the servant of Elisha looked out and saw the army had encircled them and entrapped them. And he got worried. And he came over to Elisha, who was just finishing his first cup of espresso. And he said to Elisha, he said, he said Master, we're, we're surrounded. The army, we're surrounded. And Elisha just finished his cup ever so good and said, Lord, open my servant's eyes. Now, he wasn't blind. He could physically see. But he could not see into what is called the fourth dimension, the world of the spirit until God opened his eyes. And so when his eyes were opened, he saw that on that mountain, there were all these angelic beings and chariots of fire. And right away he changed his attitude and he said, Master, those that be with us are more than those that be with them. And right now, if God opened your, all of our spiritual eyes, one thing we would see definitely would be angelic beings you may see a few demons in here, I'm not sure, and I'm talking spiritually, don't look at your neighbor right now. Because someone said, Pastor, I see demons without seeing in the spirit. Uh, forget that. So uh, there is a world of the spirit filled with angels and demons. People say, well, why'd God make demons? God didn't make demons, God made an a, anointed cherub named Lucifer. And Lucifer became known as the devil, that old serpent, Satan. Because he rebelled against God in a, in, a, in a fraction of a second, in the twinkling of an eye, was kicked out of heaven. And I don't know how he did it, but somehow he managed to get a third of the angelic host to join him. It was said that while he was the anointed cherub, that he had musical instruments built right into him. And that he led the heavenly host in worship. And so now you can really see the heavy influence of Satan and satan the satanic in many forms of music. Hello. Uh, there have been uh, musicians who will tell you that they've gone to, to seances. I mean, there have been others who will tell you they, they sold their soul to the devil because he promised them fame and fortune and, and uh, music. And of course, that has happened. There are places in uh, the music world where when they make, and Michael mentioned some of this when he preached that wonderful message on men and masculinity, where they make, they'll record music and then they will have uh, a, a seance over it. They'll have uh, spells cast on it and things of that nature. And some of you in here, when I, what I'm gonna preach today on the demonic, it may make some of you mad, may make some of you upset, uh, and that's your right, but I want you to sit through the whole thing, amen, and at least hear me out. Don't play Candy Crush or text anybody. Please, uh, just hear me out because this is very, very, very important. Jesus and his disciples cast demons out of people all the time, all the time. Now, let me say this. Uh, so when Satan rebelled against God, the name was changed from Lucifer to Satan. Don't ever call him Lucifer because he's not that. He is a created being. He is not God. And uh, uh, said uh, for the Mormons, 
The Mormons say that Jesus and Lucifer, Satan, are brothers. No, they're not. Satan is a created being. Jesus is God, the creator. And contrary to the Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus is not a created being like they say. No, he is God, the creator, the savior of mankind. Can you say amen? amen. So uh, the devil, because you, if you name the name of Jesus, the devil is literally, he and his demons, they are under your feet because you are in Christ. And all of his enemies, including the Satan and his demons, they are under his feet. The Bible says that hell was not made, not meant for man. Hell was made for the devil and his angels or his, his uh, fallen angels, his demons. There's only one devil, that's Satan. There are many demons, but they are all fallen angels. He was just one of very high rank. And so he rules in the demonic world. You walk out these doors, uh, you go down to the, the, the grocery store, your neighborhood, all kinds of demonic uh, and angelic spirits will, you would be able to see if God were to open your eyes. Now, a Christian, a true Christian, can never be possessed with a demon. But you can be oppressed you can be oppressed in body by a demon. You can be oppressed in your emotions by a demon. You can be oppressed in your mind by a demon. And there are things that we do, whether knowingly or unknowingly, that give place to the devil. Paul wrote in Ephesians, neither give place to the devil. Well, if he said don't give place to the devil, then obviously that means there are things that you can do that, I'm, I'm going to put it this way, invite demonic presence or demonic influence or demonic activity into your life. And if you continue to do those things, they will gain a stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger hold on you. Today, you're going to witness uh, uh, at the end a video of a young lady who's new to our church, but uh, her relatives are not. And she was uh, plagued uh, by demonic spirits in her home. And uh, you'll see all that. I don't want to, uh, anyway, go into all that. Mike said, don't go into all that. Let the video speak for itself. So, amen. And he's right. So how do we give place to the devil? How do we open the door uh, to the devil? The old saying, you give the devil an inch and he'll take a mile. So how do, how do we do that? How do we allow ourselves to invite or come under the influence of demonic spirits. And with that, I'm going to bring up 1 Corinthians 10. You can uh, open your Bible there if you want, but I am going to bring it on the screen. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 16 is talking about communion and the Christian's participation in communion. We, we believers, when we, when we take the cup and we take the bread and we join in fellowship with the Lord in communion, amen, which you all know you can do anytime. You don't have to wait for the church in fact, we have communion every Tuesday night at prayer, and there are individuals and couples like Andrew and Joanne, they'll have a communion usually every day, sometimes several times a day. So don't wait for, a, it's not a religious thing, it's a relationship thing. So here he's talking about the cup of blessing, which we ask God's blessing, does it not mean that in drinking it, we participate in and we share a fellowship, a communion in the blood of Christ. And we say, yes, we do. And the bread which we eat, does it not mean that in eating it, we are participating in and sharing a fellowship with a communion in the body of Christ? And so my question is, uh, if we always say, you know, we say, hey, pastor, if I could just get my friend to church, if I could just, I know they'll come and they'll come in under the influence of the Holy Ghost and they'll feel the the presence of God, you know, and, and they'll have to deal with that. Well, it's the same with the evil. There are places you know that you walk into and you can feel the demonic presence. You can feel the evil presence. Hello? And some of those places are churches. Now, I'm going to step on some toes this morning. But they'll heal if you let Jesus heal them. Okay, so here we go. Because some, some of these spirits, these demonic spirits are religious. 
And so you can come into a church just like this and you can worship and sing the songs and be oppressed by a religious spirit and not even know it. And then when someone points it out to you, one reason you know you have been oppressed or under the influence of religious spirit, you'll get mad at the truth and you'll want to hold on to your tradition. See, all of us, we are all, we all say we've been preaching about being salt and light and coming under the lordship and the leadership of Jesus Christ, right? I've been preaching on that for three weeks. And so if I come under the lordship and the kingship of Jesus, my king and my Lord and my savior, that means then when something in my life runs cross grain to what he says, if I'm a true believer, like it or not, whether it makes me happy or not, whether I have to get rid of something or not, I am going to say, you know what? He's right, he's Lord, I will leave this, I will get rid of this, I will change my mind on this, and I will come under his lordship. Not mine, because I'm not your Lord, I'm your pastor, and I watch over your soul, and I will answer for you, but I am not your Lord. So you don't argue with me, you don't uh, uh, disagree with me. I'm not your Lord. You're not gonna stand before me at the judgment. No, you're gonna stand before Jesus Christ and give account for all the light that you had. I'll just say this, just to make some people mad right now, amen. People always ask me, well, Pastor Mike, what about these charismatic Catholics? I say, you know what? God can knock down any barrier. Jesus Christ can save anybody. He can fill anybody with the Holy Ghost. But you know what? If they read their Bibles, they will come out of that demonic institution. If they want to argue and still say their Hail Marys and still pray to saints, they have a religious spirit. Hello. They have a religious spirit that won't even allow them to check into and see, well, what did Jesus say about uh, tradition? Do you know that there were people, it says in, the, in, the, uh, in Jesus' day, it said that they believed in him, but they would not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. What does that tell you? They loved their tradition, they loved their religion more than they did Jesus. And that still happens today. Now I know there are people saved and filled with the Holy Ghost in the Catholic Church, in the Presbyterian Church, in the Methodist Church. But what they need to do is, is see, hey, is, does, is the, what my church, what my church doctrine is, does that go with what Jesus said? And if it doesn't, then you have a choice to make. And people say, well, I just believe Jesus left me in here to be a witness. No, he didn't. He didn't leave Paul to remain a Pharisee to be a witness, and Paul would have been the greatest witness the Pharisees ever had. Paul was a better witness coming out of being a Pharisee and preaching for Jesus. Hello. But see, we, we, we want to think we know more than God. We're more compassionate than God. And so he said, behold, Israel after the flesh, are they not? And he's talking about when they go do their sacrifices because some is a meal offering and some sacrifices involve the, the uh, eating of certain foods. He says, when they eat of the sacrifices, they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar, are they not partake? Yes, they are. They're united in their worship of the same God. So when we Christians, when we go, or we non-Christians, whichever we are, and we go out and we begin to participate in things that God, and we'll find out here in a minute, that God says are abomination, that God says are not right for you, guess what? We hook up with the demonic. We come under the influence of the demonic. We give place to the demonic in our lives. Woo. Don't get mad yet. He said, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers. Because we have no problem saying, yes, when I'm in communion, Pastor Mike, I'm joining with Jesus. I'm partaking uh, with him. I'm a participant with him. Amen. But then when it comes to the demonic, we go, oh, no, that, no, 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 that, that, that stuff don't bother me. No, no, I got victory over that. I ain't messed up. Oh, yeah, you are messed up. 
Next one. God talked about it. God told the, the people of, of Israel, he said, listen, I'm going to deliver you. You're going to go into these heathen nations. There's seven nations I'm going to drive out before you. God said, you're going to possess their land. You're going to have crops you didn't plant, houses you didn't build. I'm going to bless you. He said, now, when you come into that land, which is where we are, we're in an idolatrous land. Can you say amen? He said, the graven images of their gods, you will burn with fire. An example, somebody, one of your friends, they go somewhere, say they go to India, and they bring you back, and maybe they're Christian, maybe they're not Christian, doesn't matter. And they bring you back this little statue of Buddha as a gift. And you're like, well, maybe it's made of marble. You're like, wow, that, you know, that's, I don't worship that, so that's pretty. I'll just keep that in my house. Well, Pastor Mike, you're superstitious. No, I'm spiritual. I believe God knows more than I do. I believe when God tells me, don't you bring it into your house. Don't, you better take that thing out and burn it or crush it or do something with it. I believe God knows what he's speaking of. So now nobody's going to bring me a Buddha from India. Thank you. He said, don't, uh, the graven images, don't, don't you get them. You shall burn them with fire. You will not desire the silver or gold that is on them. You will not take it for yourselves, lest you be ensnared, entangled, entrapped by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Now that's what he says. And then the next verse he says, neither shall you bring an abomination into your house, lest you become, that means cats. Amen. No, just kidding you, just kidding you. All the cat lovers just turned me off right there. Amen. I'm just kidding. You just want to see if you're awake. Amen. Don't want you to get mad at me yet too much. Neither shall you bring an abomination in your house lest you become, this is God talking. He knows. He sees in the spirit world all the time. He knows that when the, when the Buddhists worship the idol, there's demons behind those objects receiving the worship. Hello. It's appointed to destruct. Don't, don't be it. You know, you'll be accursed, appointed to destruction like it. But, it. but you shall utterly detest it. You shall abhor it, which means hate it, for it is an accursed thing. So why would I, as someone who names the name of Jesus, want to bring the accursed thing into my house? Still haven't sold some of you yet, have I? I'll tell you why. Because of what Paul wrote Timothy. He said, Timothy, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, which is, I believe we're living in, some, not all, but some, they'll depart from the faith. What's that mean? They'll depart from solid teaching. They'll depart from the real faith of Jesus Christ. They'll depart from his lordship, his kingship over their lives. And they will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines and devils. And it's not going to be that the devil comes and knocks on the door and says, hey, I'm a seducing spirit and I have my own little doctrine and I want you to follow it. And we go, yes, no, no. He seduces you. Seduce means to mislead, to lead in the error, to wander. There are Christians that have been led into error because of their pride, because of their greed, because this is the way I've done it. This makes me happy. I get delight out of this. I get joy out of this. Pastor, I don't see anything wrong with it. What did God say? Yeah, I brought this little wind catcher from the Indians or whatever they call that thing. What is it? Dream catcher. Dream catcher. Pastor, I, I, you know, Pastor, I, my horoscope today said, I can't believe how many Christians checked their horoscope on a daily basis. You know, or I've had someone come to me once and they go, uh, well, what's your sign? I said, Jesus. They said, no, no, dude, what's your sign? No, dude, Jesus. I, no, no, what, what month were you born in? I said, I ain't telling you, you little devil. <laughs> I don't believe in that. But there are people, man, they're religious about it. Man, my horoscope said this. 
You know, this is a sign. Hey, this man, I, yeah, I fit that person. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Taurus. I'm a Gemini. And man, my, it's crazy, Pastor Mike, because my personality fits that. Well, you could be an Aries and you'd say, man, my personality fits that. And you don't know in doing that, you're giving place to the devil. Now, I'm not saying you're possessed. Not saying that. Not saying first time you played with a Ouija board, you got possessed. Maybe you did. I don't know. But I can tell you this. You keep playing with it. You keep trusting in that horoscope. You keep doing all that junk, the yin and the yang and all that stuff. You're opening yourself up to demonic influence. You're telling the devil, come on in, man. Have a heyday with my life. And you'll find out there are places in your Christian life that are hindered and you think it's just because, you know, well, it's something else. No, it's the demonic uh, uh, influence that you are under and that you are allowing to remain in your life because you'll rebel against the teaching of the word of God. And God says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You cannot be in witchcraft and be in the favor of God at the same time. So, uh, hopefully when you came in, uh, you got an a extra piece of paper because I passed it out. has this list on it. And if you didn't, try to grab one on the way out. Uh, inviting demonic activity or inviting demonic influence in your life. Now, sometimes this is done uh, willingly. Sometimes this is done unknowingly. Hello. And some of you, you you're going to probably fight me on some of these. And I hope not because I'm not in the best shape right now and I'd lose. Uh, but let's go. Fear. And I'm talking about, there's all different kinds of fear. I'm talking about fear when, when people go and watch these horror movies. I'm talking like Freddy Krueger. How many members of that? Don't raise your hand. Freddy Krueger, The Exorcist. You know, uh, some of these, and, and, and Christians today, oh, that's just a movie. I know it's just a movie. But do you know the spirit behind it? Oh, it's just a Buddha. I know it's just a statue. But do you know the influence and the spirit behind it? Do you know when, while in doing that, you're opening yourself up to demonic influence, demonic activity? Gore films. Psalm uh, 11.5 says, He that loves violence, my soul hates, God said. Now, the word violence there is cruelty. That would be like uh, Criminal Minds, that TV show where they show these bad people and they're filleting people alive or they're cutting out their organs while they're still uh, living so they can hear them scream. That kind of, I'm not talking about the, like the movie Unbroken about the war hero or 12 Strong about Afghanistan. I'm not talking about that kind of violence. That's all over the Bible. Talking about the violence that's unjust. The violence that's ungodly, the violence that's, like I say, it's, you know, this uh, last house on the left, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, and I know that stuff's out there, but I ain't going to pay to see it. I'm not going to open myself up to it. So horror and gore films will open yourself up to invite demonic influence, sexual sins. And don't just think of the unmarried people. I mean, we're talking incest, we're talking uh, uh, child molestation. There are sexual sins that husbands and wives commit. Hello? You'll open yourself up to what? Spirit of lust? Uh, a, a, a spirit of, of degradation? Uh, unclean spirit? A filthy spirit? I mean, there, there, there are some men so possessed now, listen, from pornography, and I'm talking married men, that in order to be intimate with their wife, they got to have pictures laying over here they can look at. Tell me that isn't demonic oppression. Bitterness, man, that's a huge one. Bitterness... Not only opens the, the, the demonic influence to your spirit, but also to your bones and your physical body. Bitterness does. The Bible says bitterness is as rottenness to the bones. 
There are some people, not all, but there are some people whose bones are brittle and they suffer arthritis because they're bitter. I'm not saying everybody, but I can sure tell you it, 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 they are worse off and doctors have proven that. Doctors have come out with reports that if you're a bitter person, if you're one that, let's just get on, it holds unforgiveness and you're bitter, you're more susceptible to disease. You're more susceptible to bone disease and arthritis. Uh, witchcraft, the occult, you can read those yourself. Uh, the Ouija board. There are people, oh, yes, people buy their kids that for a, a game at Christmas. Uh, no. Oh, look, that thing moves around. I'm not pushing it. Yeah, guess who is? Horoscope, where he said seances. Gosh, I know people, uh, uh, mediums, let's go on seances and mediums. That's talking to the dead. We don't talk to the dead. God says don't talk, don't communicate with the dead. I'm going to say this as nice as I can. I said it not as nice Wednesday night, but today I'm going to say it nicer. Uh, because many people don't know. They think it's sweet. They think it's cute. Look, my grandmother died at 104 years of age, about eight years ago. And uh, my grandmother loved Jesus. So I know my grandmother right now is in heaven. She's in heaven. And she's not 104. She's a young woman. And I know that I will see my grandmother again. And for me to get on Instagram or uh, Snapchat or whatever all that junk is, which I don't even have, or Facebook, and to put on there, I love present tense my grandmother because she is alive. I love her, and I don't do that. I love my grandmother, and I miss her. No problem. But I'm not going to write her a letter. I'm not going to talk to the dead even though she's more alive now, but she's dead to this world. Hello. No problem with me going, hey, love my grandmother, miss my grandmother, wonderful woman, I know I'll see her again. No problem. I ain't gonna write her a letter. And forget about your cat, because we all know. <laughs> Just want to get you to laugh a little bit. It's getting rebellion. Uh, First Samuel says, uh, uh, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You know why? Why God said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft? The underlying theme of witchcraft is do as you will. And that's what rebellion says. I'll do what I want. Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. I'll do what I want. God says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Then we covered unforgiveness. Or how about false Jesus? A false teaching. Did you know you can open yourself up to demonic influence by people preaching a false Jesus? Sure, you open yourself up to religious spirits. That's why Paul in Galatians said, hey, it, when these guys came and said they were Christians and they came into the church in Antioch and said to the believing people, you must be circumcised, he said, no, we didn't even give them an hour. And then he went on to write in Galatians chapter one, if anybody comes and preaches any other Jesus, Paul said that what I've preached to you, let him be anathema, let him be a curse. The Greek definition is let him go to hell. That is strong, but God loves his son. And God will not invalidate the sacrifice and the precious blood of his son for some stupid man-made tradition or religion. But no, in our society, everybody's going to heaven. Every church is okay. As long as you know, pastor, they preach Jesus. Well, what Jesus are they preaching? Yeah, some people are going to get upset. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with Jesus. Amen. Uh, false Jesus, false teaching. Next one. Lies, whether you're telling them or believing them, you can open yourself up to demonic influence. Jesus said in John 8, 44, that Satan is a liar. He's the father of all liars. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks it of his own because he's a liar and the father of all liars. 
Obviously, lying is connected with satanic activity. How about being a gossip, a busybody? Oh, yeah. Now, we've all probably gossiped one time or another. Does that mean I'm positive? No, no. But if you continue to do that, you continue to gossip, you continue to be a busybody, yeah, you're opening yourselves up to unclean spirit, to a demonic influence in your life. Sure you are. Look it up. How about being an accuser or a slanderer? That's what Satan is called, the accuser of the brethren. Come to slander, to accuse. I don't want to participate with him. I don't want to side in with him. I want to be part of his camp. And then there's false spirits, which we're talking about. How about pride? Pride. Pride in, 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 pride in your race. Pride in your finances. Pride in your profession. Pride in your hobby. Pride in your looks. How about pride? That's the number one downfall of the devil was pride. He said, I will, I will go into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the throne of God. I will be like the most high. I, 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 right in the middle of sin, S-I-N, is a big fat I. Whoo. And all of this is done. I mean, there, there's plenty of stuff we could put up there where we invite demonic activity. And I, I would ask you to research your Bible and see what God says about it. These all and more give the devil a foothold or a stronghold in your life. He's out to confuse you. He's out to, to, to cause you to be bewildered, to be perplexed. He's out to smear and muddy the word of God and to make it where you say, man, I'm not quite sure about this. I mean, would God really say this? Would God really be th this strict here? He's, he wants to get you to where you can't distinguish between right and wrong, good and evil. To combine without order the jumble. To desensitize. Man, we're getting desensitized. Things that used to move us and bother us, they don't anymore. People don't, preachers don't preach what they should because they're afraid they're going to lose people. They're afraid they're going to lose money. Their church isn't going to be the hot spot in town to go to. No, but it's going to be the Father's house. It's going to be a place where hopefully you come and you learn and you, 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 you realize that love, the love of Jesus is the very foundation. Faith works by love. And in love, you will lovingly give the truth to people. You will lovingly tell them the truth. And, and in love, you will stick with Jesus, whether those people get mad at you, uh, cross you off of Facebook, whatever. You're going to continue to love them. You're going to continue to speak to them. You're going to continue to warn them if necessary. I mean, this, this, this stuff is, uh, is serious. Because like I said, you could be, you could be under demonic influence and not even be aware of it until someone tries to point it out to you and then you get all upset and mad. Then you become aware of it, hopefully. Everybody else is aware of it. Two more verses, then we're going to show the video. Deuteronomy 18, God said, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire as a sacrifice. Now, in our day, that's called abortion. Back in those days, there was a God named Molech. He was one of many gods, little g. And he was this statue, a metal statue, and they would heat up his hands. And they would take their live children and place them in the hands of Molech with the fire burning under him. So that's one of the things God's talking about here. In our day, it's abortion, where a mom, whether willingly or was lied to, was deceived or willingly, goes into an abortion clinic, has her child decapitated, ripped apart, gutted, So you will not make your son or daughter pass through the fire as a sacrifice. You will not. There will not be found among you one who uses divination, tarot cards, fortune telling cards, one who practices witchcraft, uh, you know, try, trying to uh, contact Satan, 
trying to get special blessings, if I could put it that way, from uh, the satanic world. One who interprets omens. Oh, dude, I saw an omen. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, no, no, that was just a white owl. No, Pastor, it was an omen. I, I'm supposed to go to Florida. <laughs> Cleo and I know of a, a couple. One of the reasons they got married is because she saw three shooting stars. They're divorced today. Horrible divorce. Oh, I had this omen, Pastor Mike. I went outside and it was raining and everything was wet. I mean, that's how bad some people want it. And no, we're not talking about fortune cookies at the Chinese restaurant. Unless you actually believe those things and you live your life by them. Like my open mind up and says, you're remarkable. I'm like, praise God. I'm remarkable. I go, look at this, Cleo. She's like, that's a lie. I think this one was yours. You're irritating and disgustful. I don't... friend of mine once he opened a fortune cookie there was no fortune in it he goes I wonder what that means I said it means you're going to die <laughs> you know you'll have a future man and for a little bit he believed that he's still alive today that was years ago uh, fortune telling one who inter or sorcerer uh, here we go last one or one who cast a charm or a spell you, you know if you're out witnessing or whatever you're at work and whatever hey, hey, let me say this uh, I said this first service uh, thank God for those of you that have a secular job and you're around a bunch of devils because you're to be salt and light amen and, and you're the only salt and light that they have hey, amen I know people go oh, I wish I just worked around Christians no you don't you go ahead and get you your, your job at the Christian bookstore, you'll like it for maybe a couple of days. And they'll be like, I can't stand these Christians. Amen. Uh, what good is it being a light among other lights? You need to change your perception, man. I want to be, I want to be a light around a, a bunch of darkness because guess what? The love of God in me can handle it. That's right. Come on, brother. The love of God in me, can, I can't handle it. But the love of God in me can. Or one who casts a charm, if, if you, they try to cast a charm on you, a spell, I say, go ahead. It's just going to bounce off of me. It's going to hit you. So what? you better not do it. You try to cast diarrhea on me? Mm -mm. <laughs> you better stay close to the bathroom. <laughs> or me. me. <laughs> or a medium. <laughs> or a spiritist, or a necromancer. There it is, one who seeks the dead, seeks to talk to the dead. Everyone who does those things is utterly repulsive to the Lord, and because of these detestable practices of the Lord, your God drives out these nations before you. So I hope this, uh, if, if nothing else, it's, it's uh, giving you a thirst to check into the demonic and make sure, you know, you, you may need to go through your house and see if you got anything in there that we're going to see this testimony real quick. And this is uh, of a young woman that uh, Elevate is now her church home. Uh, her brother uh, in law is Taylor Valderez sitting back there, and Laura's the sister, and she's back there. Amen. Uh, it's Claudia, and she's going to give you a testimony. Um, anyway, it'll speak for itself. Go ahead. My name is Claudia Flores. Um, I was raised in California um, by my mother, who was a single mom of four children. Uh, we, we grew up as Catholics, and um, we've been here in Nebraska since I was 13. The Virgin Mary was always part of our home. Uh, my mom, you know, was a big believer, and as I was growing up, I became a big believer as well. Catholic was always, you know, in our home. Um, I always had a Virgin Mary in our home. I was a big believer of St. Jude um, in our home as well. Um, and have been since I was little. Within the last year, it's, you know, been one negative thing after another. 
Um, we went from having, you know, a beautiful townhome to having to move into a one-bedroom apartment with my three children. Um, my husband has been in and out of jail, um, struggling with drug addiction. Um, three months ago, I started noticing um, different things happen in our home. I uh, started with, um, you know, uh, key, key, my keys were being misplaced all the time. Um, you know, and there was money missing um, when it was just me and my children home. Uh, my husband wasn't in the home at the time. I couldn't sleep at night. Um, I would be really tired and wake up at between 2 and 4 in the morning, just drenched in sweat. Um, and I was just terrified and I didn't know what I was scared of. Went in my uh, bathroom, again picking up, and then um, I, from when I walked back out in the living room, I just noticed a really strong smell. Uh, right away I knew that it was rubbing alcohol from, you know, the strong smell from it. And um, I looked around, um, at first it was poured onto my couch. I mean, just uh, half a bottle poured onto my couch. Cleaned that up with towels, took the towels back into the uh, basket, and then walked in my bathroom to make sure that the al rubbing alcohol was there. And it was, um, it was open and it wasn't where I had put it. Um, we had never used rubbing alcohol. We just have it in the home just in case. And um, I was by myself and I went back to the living room to finish picking up. And um, I, had a, I used to have a stand with my Virgin Mary, my St. Jude, I had candles, rosaries. There was a huge uh, puddle of rubbing alcohol right underneath that. Um, again, cleaned it up walked back in the bathroom and it was moved again from where I had placed it this, the same morning with nobody else being home. I've always used Snapchat to take pictures um, and on Snapchat you can um, you know take uh, pictures of yourself and it has this thing to where you can um, add you know uh, puppy, a puppy face to your own it detects your face so it could put on puppy uh, nose, ears, um, and if you're doing it with another friend, it also detects their face to where it's going to put uh, the same effect on them, uh, whether it's bunny ears or a puppy face. Six months ago, I started, um, I took a picture um, by myself, nobody else around me, I was by myself, um, and uh, the picture, it had a, a little crown, um, it would put a crown over my, over my, my head. Um, so when I took that picture, um, I looked at the picture and I noticed that something, there was an, it had detected another face, but there was nobody there. It was just the crown um, by itself. And um, so I brushed it off, just thought it was just my phone um, all being messed up. And um, about three months ago, I uh, noticed it again, um, but this is with the, you know, I had gotten a whole new phone. Um, I was taking pictures again at home um, and you know I was doing the puppy face on you know on my snapchat camera and at that at that moment at that moment it detected another face right behind me um, with another set of you know puppy ears and the nose um, and you know I just you know I did catch you know catch my attention at then and but within the last month it was I was taking pictures and it was another face everywhere I was going, everywhere, right behind me, beside me. If I was taking pictures with another person, it was there too. Um, the, I mean, I could see the eyes. I could see the eyes and I could see the, the, the frame of the nose. Um, the, I would say within the last month, they had gotten so bad to where I was facing my phone towards the ceiling or the, uh, the wall and I could see the face there. I mean, it was the, the eyes, it was the, the whitish, I would say very different eyes. Um, I could even say it looked angry. Um, and I, I mean, it was to the point to where I didn't even want to take pictures anymore. My sister Laura did mention to um, Pastor Mike and Pastor Mike what was going on. Um, and then she um, asked me if, if it would be okay uh, with them to come over to my house um, to pray with me and pray for me and pray for the house. They were there when I got home. Um, I invited them into my home um, and you know I explained everything that was going on um, in and out of the house. Um, Jessica sat down with me and um, started asking me questions um, about what was going on. As Jessica was praying, um, she was asking me questions too. One of the questions she asked me was if I was ready to accept Jesus into my life. I said, yes, I do. I want Jesus in my life. As we were praying, um, Jessica stopped and asked me if I knew um, what 
uh, speaking in tongues were, and I told her no, and she asked me if that's something that I wanted to that I wanted to do, that I wanted to learn, and I and I agreed, and I said yes. Um, so she started speaking in tongues, and um, she just told me just you know open your mouth and start praying, and it'll it'll happen, it'll come. So I started praying. Um, nothing was happening. So then I just all of a sudden felt something over my mouth to where I couldn't I couldn't even pray. I couldn't, and let alone speak and say nothing. Um, she just kept telling me, just say it, you know, just open your mouth and just pray and it'll happen. And I just, something was holding on to me to where I can't even talk. Krabby was praying in the back. Um, my brother-in-law Taylor was also praying um, next to my sister. My sister was holding my hand. Um, Jessica was on the other side of me, um, praying with me, holding my hand. Um, I was still not being, I couldn't speak, I couldn't pray. So at that point, um, Pastor Michael asked me, do you feel something over your, over your mouth, around your, around your neck? And I, I said, yes, I do. And at that moment, uh, Pastor Michael put his hand on, on my head and started praying and told something to get out. As that happened, um, you know, I, I heard Pastor Michael saying it a couple times, you know, get out, get out. And after that, I, I fell down on my knees and I just, I felt like there was something that I needed to let out. And I, when I finally did open my mouth, I just started throwing up. I, I, threw, I, I mean, just repeatedly started throwing up. I remember, you know, getting up and um, I was asked if there was something in the house that I, that I felt that I wanted to get rid of, that I felt like, you know, in my heart that it shouldn't be in my home. And I said yes. Um, I immediately got up. I, I, I started taking out uh, my Virgin Mary, uh, my, my huge St. Jude uh, picture frame that I had in my living room. I had a small uh, St. Jude uh, statue in my living room as well. Um, candles, rosaries. Uh, Pastor Michael asked me if there was if I was feeling any pain, and I said yes. Um, I felt like a, a lot of pain on my lower back and a lot of pressure. Uh, then he mentioned that it was religion, religion holding on to me, didn't want to let me go. Uh, he, asked, he asked me if he could lead me into a prayer and I said yes. As we were praying, I told this thing to leave, to get out of my home, get out of my life, um, so that we could feel at peace for once. And after that, um, Pastor Michael asked me if, how I felt and I just said I, I, I felt good. I didn't feel the pain, I didn't feel that pressure anymore. Since that day, I've felt great. I've I I feel at peace. Um, I've gotten in, you know into a new home. Um, you know, thanks to the church, thanks to uh, Jessica and Kirby, who've been such a huge blessing. Um, you know, I mean, Pastor Michael too. Um, my my sister Laura, her husband Taylor. Um, you know, Jessica. You know, on on an everyday basis, texts me, see how I'm doing. I mean, I keep being blessed with one thing after another. I want to thank Jesus for everything um, because without Him, none of this would have happened. Um, you know, thanks to Him, He blessed me with bringing me into Elevate Church. I could not think about one time that I was blessed like this. You know, going through going to a Catholic church. Um, I couldn't even tell you what I learned when I used to go to the Catholic church. And thanks to Jesus for bringing these people into my life. Now I know more, I want to know more. I want to know more about God. I want to learn everything I can about God. And I just want to thank Elevate Church because um, without Jesus and them, this would have never happened. Amen, give it up for Jesus, will you? And she's sitting back there and she's still free today. And I want to tell you, she gave her life to Jesus, was filled with the Holy Ghost, with the biblical evidence of speaking in tongues. Laura and Taylor, who we know have been saved for a while, been coming here, but had also been, uh, you know, questioning and seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit with nobody laying hands on them or touching them. Jesus filled them with the Holy Spirit. They begin to pray in other tongues. Amen. Give Jesus a hand, would you? So I want us all to stand. Go ahead and play, Wesley. I want us all to stand. 
And uh, I'm going to dismiss you here in a second. If, uh, if you're going to come out to the, uh, the helicopter drop and you want to help set up the perimeter, I need you there at 1.30. If you want to come out and just help and be inside the perimeter to keep children from running in, I need you there at 2 o'clock. If you just want to come with your camera and take pictures of a helicopter that gets 10 feet off the ground, please come. Amen. And uh, if we have eggs left over, we'll throw some out for the, the, the non-special needs children that, that want something. So we'll do that too. But more importantly right now, I'm going to pray to dismiss you. But listen, you watch this and you heard the preaching. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need to recommit my life to Christ, man. I need to recommit my life to Jesus. I, when we say amen, I want you to come over here where I am. Now listen, there's a difference between the flesh and demonic activity. A lot of things we want to blame on the devil. No, you just need to quit. Just go throw the porn out of your house and quit it. Just go dump the alcohol down the drain and quit it. Some things are the flesh. You can't cast the flesh out. I wish we could, but you can't. You're going to live with it. You got to subdue it. But if you're here today, you say, Pastor, I'd, I've tried all that, man. I've, I've done, I think I may be under demonic influence. Well, we want to pray for you too. So if that's you, when we say amen, I want you to come over here, my elders and, 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 uh, and them, they will pray for you for deliverance. If you uh, need to recommit your life to Christ or want to receive Christ in your life, please come over here where I'm at. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for your protection, Lord, uh, watching out for us. Thank you for your protection out there at the, uh, the helicopter egg drop, Jesus. Uh, pray everything be safe, Lord, in Jesus' name, that the children uh, have a great time, be blessed. And Lord, I just pray right now for those who need to recommit their lives to you. Right now, Holy Ghost, you would convince them. Right now, convict them right now. And Lord, those that, that want prayer for deliverance, Jesus, thank you in advance. Thank you in advance for your great power. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Uh, if you need to recommit your life to Christ, please come. Let me pray for you. If you feel you need some type of deliverance, please go over there.